LB100 is going to be my stand in for a P bass, but you guys understand. So, if you look at where our pickup is located right here, this nice sweet spot right here, uh, if we wanted to, and we have passive control, so we just have uh, a passive volume, passive treble. So, the treble's just cut. So, I can't add any top end, I can't add any brightness, I can't add any of the sizzle that's down here closer to the bridge. So, this is the most we can get. We can cut some treble, but we can't add more. But we got a nice, big, beautiful round sound in this location. If we look at where Leo Fender was going after that, this CLF Research prototype, this is the uh, CLF 75B2, I believe, with the hand-painted artwork on it. But Note what we've got, we have a split coil pickup. The positions of the coils are reversed, but imagine the whole thing is moving down toward the bridge. So we've got a split coil pickup, but a big fat magnet. So this thing is clearly a big fat brawny version of a P-Bass pickup. That's what's going on here. And it's moved down toward the bridge. So we've got, uh, Big fat pickup, but it can't get that much bottom end, especially with this reversed out. So this bass being fully active, it has cut and boost. So the idea is, hey, we could move that pickup down here and where our bass would just fizzle out, hey, we're just gonna kick that up with the EQ. Plus we can get all this cool sparkly sizzly, you guys understand what that that, that is. Uh, but this wasn't completed, but I wanted to show this to you where you visualize sort of the precision base location, and then you see what's going on here, it sort of seems more of a sensible thing. How did we end up here? This is just what Leo Fender called an end-to-end -end humbucking pickup, which just means that this coil goes from one end all the way to the other end of the strings versus this uh, split coil, which he called a percussive humbucking uh, pickup. So, this was just a technical change from this, but the spirit of the positioning that he had here is the same. Uh, I want a big powerful pickup, and I'm gonna move it down towards the bridge, so I'm getting lots of sizzle, a lot of strength, but I've got especially the bass boost to compensate for the fact that I've moved this out of the range of this sweet soft spot for the big round stuff. Now let's take a look at the GNL L1000 bass. The pickup position moved from back down here back up into this, this familiar old zone here, like when we started with the precision bass. So if we move this back here, you know we're gonna have this nice big round kind of sound, but what about all that nice zing and the treble and so forth that, uh, that Leo Fender was trying to capture by moving the pickup down there sacrificing some bass but compensating for that with the EQ. Now in this case, the bass, it doesn't need any help on the bottom end. It's down here, so this bass is passive. It is volume, a treble cut, and a bass cut. Just like this is volume, treble cut boost, and this is bass, cut boost, this is active. But the ring, and this is passive, but the arrangement where you just get volume, treble, bass, that's carried over here, but there's no boosting. So this is only cut, so we can cut out some of the bass, but we can't put in highs that aren't there. We can still can only cut highs. So what Leo Fender did on this one is we have this switch here. So it has a three position switch and it has a choice of three modes for the coil. We have 
uh, a series mode where the signal essentially passes through one coil before it goes into the other one and then back up on its way. Uh, this one, the middle position is single, so we're just using one of the coils, so it's just conventional single coil. Or the, uh, the third position, which uh, the internet people called it OMG mode for oh my god mode because it sounds so huge on the bottom end, but then there's this wonderful uh, kind of crystalline clarity and air on the top end, which seems like how can you, you, you're not supposed to have your cake and eat it too, it's not supposed to work that way. So it was never mind the technical sort of label that Leo Fender was putting on it. Um, people just thought, oh my god. But the OMG is essentially, is we're still using a, uh, a humbucking series mode, but we're introducing a capacitor across uh, one of the, the, the coils. Essentially what we're doing is a, a high, a low pass filter on one of the co coils. So together they're saying, it's like both of the coils are gonna sing the low notes. So you two together are gonna sling, sing the low notes and you're gonna be real strong, uh, but we just want one of you singing the high parts. And the reason for that is we, as we get these coils real close together, there starts to be the phase cancellation. So, hey, what is all that stuff canceling out? So if we just have just one of you sing the highs, there's not gonna have that cancellation. So it's gonna be beautiful highs of one note, of one voice, like a single coil might be. Uh, but we're gonna have the power of like two of you sing on the bass side, on the bass side. Uh, so we have uh, series, single coil, or the OMG. And the cool thing that I really wanna draw your attention to is the OMG mode. Because if you look where we started, in the nice sweet spot here in the precision bass, uh, but we can't get much highs, that's, that's all we got. Then as we moved to the 70s, on um, what would become a stingray, but it's not at this point, we have a split coil pickup, humbucking pickup, but it's repositioned. It's essentially moving down towards the bridge to capture more of the, the highs, the sizzle, the snap, a lot of the stuff that is, you know, gets close to the bridge. So let's move that down and compensate, especially for the bass with the equalization, and then we see it kind of fleshed out here with the end-to-end -end humbucking pickup. And interestingly, that is run as parallel, so it's not even the bassier arrangement for the coils, but it is the arrangement that's going to give you more single coil open air and stuff, and the rest is going to make up with the onboard EQ. So they were designed as a system. Really cool. Uh, this was a little back-to-basics thing, like, okay, let's dewire stuff to some extent, or like, without the preamp, let's go without a preamp, let's do really an evolution of where you started with that one over there. Pickups moved back here, we have, now it's the Geno magnetic field design, end to end humbucker, uh, and you have a choice of series for the big sound, like a big giant version of that sound, but still with some, some kind of dimension to it. Uh, single quote, which sounds really cool, but the OMG mode is where I'm gonna move this up, I'm gonna give you a big womp and bass, big womp and bass, but it's not gonna muddy up the mids and highs. I'm gonna have a beautiful solo singer giving you all the top end. So this was a simple and elegant solution to kind of get where you wanted to go. It's like, I like that big bottom end there, but I want some more top end uh, excitement going on. So he did it with this one. So this was really, uh, uh, at that time, his latest, his latest stop on the single pickup bass. Let's just say that. Anyway, uh, I just had these guys around here and I thought, hey, this would be fun because it's kind of a visual. You know, you could talk about it, hear me babble, that kind of sucks. But if we have these things and you kind of see the chain where it's going, it's really much cooler. And of course we can do it in Leo's lab, which is extra fun. So anyway, thanks for watching everybody. I do appreciate it, and I will look forward to seeing you all soon. Thanks. Bye. Hey, everybody. Hey, I totally forgot. I wanted to show you something. I got this case in front of me, and I totally spaced out. This is that uh, L1000 that I scored from Guitar Center. It was on the wall in Brea. Look at this thing. Nice, beautiful early L1000 in uh, three-tone sunburst over mahogany and the, the now it just says the nitrocellulose and the reddishness of the mahogany it's just sort of melted into this dark smoky 
tobacco sunburst. But at the time we made them, it was just called the sunburst, and it was actually a three-ton sunburst. But the nitrocellulose has done some rad stuff to this. Uh, it is missing the knob still. I haven't gotten to that because I don't want to just put a new one on. Look at this beautiful. I don't know if you guys can see this, but the wear on this thing is just the volume knob is just beautiful. So. I need to put a knob on it, and yeah, I gotta do a little relic stuff on it. Cause I'm not just gonna put a shiny knob on. I need to put this thing on and make it feel like it, like you know, it lost a finger and now it's back, like it never lost a finger. You know, it's gotta have that mojo. So hey, I just wanted to show this to you really quick. This is the L1000 that I got at Guitar Center, and I am really stoked about that. And we'll definitely show you more of this soon. Anyway, that's it. Thanks everybody. Come on. Did I wait so long? Ain't nothing else me more than these songs.